DSLR barn door trap next. Hello, my name is Doug Hubble and welcome to Astrophotography Tutorials. Today I want to talk about barn door traps. Now a barn door trap is very useful for your DSLR camera. What happens is you get these two pieces of wood and you get a motor and you time this so it when it moves, the night sky moves, it kind of moves along with the night sky and therefore you can get nice round stars with longer exposures using your DSLR. Now this is a very inexpensive project. I believe it's a, a do-it-yourself project that both you and I can do and we'll go through the steps together here and I'll show you how to do it. Here's an overview of the parts we're going to need to get this uh, project for the barn tour trap. We'll need six and a half by eight inch half inch plywood pieces, tripod ball head and then as the the night moves and this will track and move this up to track the stars better. So we'll need something to hinge it on. 64 tooth spur gear, 16 tooth spur gear, expansion nut or blind well nut, 4 rpm, 3 volt DC gear motor, 10 32nd, brass threaded rod, miscellaneous nuts and washers. Drafting out the uh, plates here I have uh, drawn out exactly what I want to uh, pattern and cut out. Uh, these instructions can be found easily. I'll put a link for these exact uh, patterns and measurements. Uh, I just roughly uh, took this and drew it out. Here's the bottom plate. Drew a line here two inch to get that and then I drew a center line down here. Uh, this right here is going to be my uh, quarter inch hole for the bolt drive. Uh, there's a half inch hole It'll go for the motor and then a slot here so uh, there'll be some adjustment. Uh, it may depend on your motor of how far these are spaced out and I'll end up probably uh, you know, doing some adjustments on that as I get it, get it closer to the finish. Uh, also on the, um, the top plate here, um, there's a quarter inch hole for the, uh, the camera ball head that's going to go here and uh, right here is a 732nd uh, hole for the uh, bolt drive so what I'm going to do next is just uh, cut out these patterns and put them together okay we'll cut the top plate first okay so I changed my design plan I was going to put two hinges on there but once I put the two hinges on I found that it was binding so uh, I think it's better that I keep it with one hinge and avoid any kind of binding on there. Top plate here there's a 7 seconds hole that we need to, to drill and then also on the bottom this is where the drive bolt comes through and this is a little bit larger hole this is a quarter inch hole so what I'll do is I'll line these two plates up with the hinge attached drill a 732nd hole through both pieces and that should give me a uh, good alignment the 732nd hole through both pieces now it's time to drill the quarter inch hole right through the center of that 732nd. Now one thing that we noticed here is off of my line here I didn't match up quite well on there so I'm going to have to readjust uh, this half inch hole to make sure I get my spacing distance to put my uh, my gears in there. 10 32nd rod uh, the instructions you'll see will I'll say do like a, a foot piece uh, but what I got is I purchased this this uh, length here. It's about three feet uh, long. And what I'm going to do to give me more of a smooth bend is I'm just going to try bending the whole entire piece and then picking out the, the little uh, uh, five inch piece that I need from it. So let me just go ahead and give it a little bit of a bend here. There we go got a bend right there. Now I'm going to cut off about five or six inches of that.
odd uh, cut, I'm going to then cap it off with a, a cap nut. I put a uh, regular 10 32nd nut, a flat or a lock washer or a flat washer. Uh, I need to then put this in between the, the top piece here. Now one of the things I'm noticing right now as I, as I put this together is I've drilled the hole straight and with this uh, 7 inch radius in there uh, it's not quite going to be a straight hole it's going to have a little bit of a bend to it so I might have to do some adjustments on that I'm kind of loose fitting right now I don't want to over tighten it but I think I will end up tightening it after I uh, get the final adjustments on this now this blind well nut that I've got here this uh, 10 32nd I guess it's supposed to fit somehow inside of the uh, the larger gear here I finally figured out how to get this well nut into the uh, 64 tooth gear right here uh, what I did is I took out there's like a brass bushing right inside here and what I did is I took a, a, a drill and kind of enlarged it just a little bit then took a, uh, a, a round file and kind of brushed it out a little bit so that this uh, well nut would fit in there a little better then after I, I got it put in the nut is actually on the bottom on the bottom right here that's where the nut is and then the rubber piece comes out over here and what I did is after I got it through I then cut it out. Now one of the tricks of getting and pulling it through this gear here is if you take a piece of your scrap rod put it on there then you can kinda of like pull it the well nut through uh, with, into there. Now you don't even need to use a set screw. I mean I, I actually lost the set screw which was kind of a drag but uh, you don't need the set screw. The, the, the rubber well nut holds that on there nice and tight. Also what I ended up doing too is I uh, tightened this up a bit and it made it where it wasn't it was kind of binding as it went through there. So what I did is I just kind of bent it a little bit up here so that it would go in and out of that hole very easy without any resistance. And now uh, it it, uh, it moves very freely um, there's no binding on here. I was having a little bit of problem with other experiments and uh, this is actually the best one. Here, now I originally drawn out this pattern but it looks like I'm going to have to move it since I uh, started putting it together. So what I did is I took the motor and I made a pattern of the whole pattern of that, that's that's here. So I stuck the, uh, the shaft through a piece of paper and then uh, poked a couple of holes through there so now I have a pattern of the motor so I can then better position this gear. With that pattern there I can then get an approximation of what I need to uh, put down there. I want to make sure I, I'm using enough of my uh, area here and what I'll do is I'll place the gear where I think it should be and then what I'm, I'll, I'll do is I'll take this uh, nail and put it down the center of it and poke a center hole there. Pattern, I went ahead and marked out a couple of holes. Now one thing uh, that I'm trying to avoid is trying to give myself enough room so if I, uh, I use a screw or something to hold this down or nut that it doesn't bind or interfere with the gear. So I'm hoping that that's enough room. Uh, when I pull it away now I can see my three marks. Uh, my initial design I had it out here but I left enough room where I can uh, come back and, and, and make that uh, elongated hole so I have room to um, uh, put the gear in and make the adjustments I need. So this half inch hole that was originally uh, originally right here I'm gonna move it back out to over. There's the half inch hole and I made a little elongated hole uh, then another little small hole to fit the uh, ear of the motor uh, what I did uh, pretty easily to figure out the the pattern of that elongated hole 
is I took a nail and kind of like put it down in there as my uh, my guide to then figure out what type of movement I would have on that particular uh, path right there and within the half inch hole uh, you'll notice that there's really not much room uh, for it to go back and forth in I mean this this hole that that's right here um, what is that that's pretty close to about nine millimeters I noticed that it wasn't the shaft wasn't coming up high enough through the uh, hole there so what I did is I um, cut it recessed it a little bit on the wood took about half of that off and now that the motor sits closer to the top there the shaft comes through good enough to where I can get a good grip with the set screw on the 16 tooth gear. This uh, piece right here is the uh, quarter by 20 T nut that we need and what the, this job is is to hold everything down onto your tripod uh, plate and you know there's not very much thread that actually grabs onto that so this step is going to be very very important this is basically the only thing that's going to keep it from falling off of your tripod okay that seemed to work uh, pretty well here I've, I've got the the hole drilled I used a, a three-quarter inch uh, butterfly drill and then uh, I used a, uh, a quarter inch drill to drill that out and then I kind of had to elongate this because this uh, uh, T, T nut it was a little bit larger than a quarter quarter inch but now it uh, it fits in there and if we turn it around the other side you can see this just sticking out um, I went very careful I went back and forth a few times just to make sure uh, what I'll do next is I'll take some uh, good old Gorilla Glue and uh, gl glue that down in there and uh, what I'll do is I'll put this uh, this uh, adapter plate with the, the quarter 20 on it and let that set overnight is mount the ball head and drill a hole on the top plate for uh, the ball head to mount to uh, one thing that I, I didn't realize when I purchased this ball head is that it's actually a 3 8 uh, size hole in the bottom so you might want to make sure you double check that when you get ready to uh, do the installation I had bought some uh, quarter 20s thinking that that's what it was uh, but then I found that I had a, a, a 3 8 bolt to mount it with and one of the things that I, I noticed is that in this particular one I think it's like an inch and a half long but when you put it down on the on the plate this release knob is, is it comes really you know really close to it I mean you might be able to get away with uh, just having it like that but what I've found is I have a, a a few extra washers so what I plan on doing is you know giving it some spacing to help elevate it off of here a little bit and uh, see how that looks so the next step is is to uh, take this out and drill a 3 8 hole and this 3 8 hole uh, is uh, you know two inches and it's down in the dead center of it and it's going to be actually just opposite of the uh, T-nut that we have on the uh, bottom plate. This particular ball head, now, now that I put a, a few spacers right here at the bottom, I can easily move this lever to lock it. And, uh, you know, this right here also, I just found out in this particular ball head that it has a swivel point at the bottom as well. So that comes in handy when I want to... Uh, go to different angles uh, all the way around and then now that I've I, I get raised it off a little bit I can then lock it and then it will be of course locked in position so that was kind of a, a, a good fortune I guess to uh, be able to put a little bit of a spacer in between there so I have that freedom to move the ball head in any direction I, I need to. next plan I have is I'm going to make a finder scope uh, for this mount now what the plan is is what I plan on doing is this hinge should be pointed at Polaris and I'm just gonna make a very inexpensive finder scope I've got a piece of PVC pipe and a couple of uh, connector fittings 
and what I plan on doing is I'm going to try to um, get a piece of wire and take that wire and run it across as a crosshair. I plan on taking a Dremel tool and just cutting a, a couple of a couple little uh, edges inside there so that when I go to lay the wire down in there I can lay the wire in and not uh, have it bind up when I put the cap on the end of it. I decided to go with these little uh, caps because the caps what they'll do is it'll make it a, a nice smooth surface whereas this might have a cut surface and you know you're putting it up against your eye ideally you want something that's not going to cut your eye up. piece looks like after I notched it out uh, around the, the edges here. Okay so there's my finder scope on the cheap here. Uh, I, I think it'll work okay. I mean it, it looks uh, pretty good. You can see the crosshairs down the, the center of it and all we're trying to do with this particular finder scope is just to find Polaris, at least in my opinion. That's how the, the, the platform should be uh, pointed at is at uh, Polaris and then in my particular case I have the, uh, the the other opposite side pointing to the east. I noticed that I needed some place, something to ma uh, mount it and I found this half inch wall mount bracket which is perfect. Um, it'll uh, be easily attached with one screws and I got the, the t number 12 by 1 inch screws for these. There's the skew number for this uh, plastic bracket. Very lightweight. Uh, try mounting the motor in here. Now, right now I don't have the electronic circuit. That'll come up in uh, the next tutorial when I work on the electronic circuit. But this particular motor, it came with uh, a battery pack on here. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and hook it up to my, uh, my barn door trap there make sure that everything's working. Uh, the one thing that you'll notice on this particular motor, the little ears on here, it takes a 440 screw that fits in these holes right here. Assembly now, the motor's running. Uh, it's moving it uh, right now, it's, it's just it's not moving it with a time circuit. That's, we'll do the electronic circuit next in the, uh, the next video. Uh, but this is the rough, rough draft of it. It's 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 pretty well assembled at this point. Uh, what I'll do is I'll you know of course sand it down and do some painting on it, get it all brushed out. Uh, might have to do a little bit more tweaking here. One thing you'll notice too is that this uh, particular battery case it will interfere. So this is definitely going to have to come off. And when I put the new circuit on, then it won't have this this battery case on it. But it was a good uh, good little test to see see it in action to see it move around. Also, by the way, see that little Allen screw? The little Allen screw on this uh, small gear is super tiny. Uh, I'm going to have to go get another wrench to uh, manipulate that screw because it, it is just so very tiny. Uh, just keep that in mind when you get ready to put it together. Uh, it, but there it is, you know, it's uh, not too bad. We'll see how it really performs uh, once we get it all assembled. And well, that covers part one of the barn door trap for DSLR cameras. Stay tuned for part two where I'll discuss how to make the electronic circuit. Also, if this is your first time watching, I would like you to subscribe. I publish two astrophotography videos on the 1st and 15th of every month. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.